Welcome back to CKD guys. Be sure to subscribe. Uh, remember there's a subscribe box in the bottom right hand corner. It's interactive. For you guys who are watching on your smartphones, your laptops. And uh, today's video is going to be a video about evolution. I personally uh, think microevolution is definitely uh, a, a thing and it's verifiable in terms of adaptation and evolutionary change over time. However, macroevolution uh, is not substantiated by the fossil record and we'll hear a detailed description from uh, Frank Turek in this video that we're going to watch and uh, I think it pretty much sums it up. So we'll have a few of these videos coming up from, from him and enjoy. Yes sir, what's your name? Kyle. Hey Kyle, go ahead. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, atheists, uh, their main point is in evolution, like that's what they believe, mm -hmm. you didn't really talk about that. Mm -hmm. At all, so I was just wondering how or what way do you uh, disprove the theory of evolution from a biblical and scientific standpoint? Okay, we have a couple of chapters in the book on that, so I'll just give you the two minute answer. First thing, when you talk about evolution, you have to ask people, what do you mean by evolution? Because the word can mean so many different things. If it means change over time, count me in, we see that. If you mean microevolution, adaptation within a type, count me in, we see that. But if you mean molecules to man without any intelligence, count me out. Because I don't think there's evidence for it. In fact, I think there's evidence against it. Let me just give you a few reasons to believe that the Darwinian, neo-Darwinian view of the world doesn't make sense. Number one, believe it or not, is the fossil record. The major body plans appeared instantaneously virtually in the fossil record called the Cambrian explosion. Um, they just pop into existence, it seems, without any fossil precursors. This is what uh, Stephen Meyer talks about in his book called Darwin's Doubt, because this is the doubt Darwin had. He said, look, why aren't all these geological strata filled with all these intermediate uh, uh, types if my view is correct. And he said, well, if we keep searching the geological strata, one day we're going to find all these intermediate types. We've been searching it for 150 years and we don't find that. Uh, also, there's something called irreducible complexity, that things can't evolve in a gradual manner and still have function. All the parts need to be there at the same time in order to have something that's in working order. Also, there's a new discovery, relatively new, called epigenetic information. And epigenetic information is the structure of the cell. They used to think that DNA was destiny, that if you could alter DNA, you could get any body type you want. Now we know that's not true. You can mutate DNA from now till doomsday. You'll never get a new body plan, because you need the structure of the body plan, not just the DNA. And DNA doesn't give you the structure. In fact, um, you could liken DNA to a software program and liken epige epigenetic information to uh, the wood and nails and wires and cement that puts together this room. The software might be the, or DNA might be the software that gives you the plan to create the room, but in order to create the room, you need hard materials to do so. And DNA doesn't give you the hard materials. Uh, there's genetic limits to change. That's another problem. Um, even using all of our intelligence to breed, say, different types of dogs, we can't break the genus of dogs. We run into the gen genetic limits. Well, if we can't, using all our intelligence, break genetic limits, why should we expect an unintelligent process to do so? I don't think we should. But let me hasten to say this. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that macroevolution is true, that the Darwinists are right, that this Darwinian viewpoint is true. Does that mean God does not exist or Jesus didn't rise from the dead? No. So even if they're right, it doesn't affect whether or not Christianity is true. It might create problems for biblical inerrancy in the Old Testament, but it doesn't mean that God doesn't exist or Jesus didn't rise from the dead. And let me say one last thing about this. Even if macroevolution is true, it requires God. Why? Well, because you need a universe in order to have biological evolution. <laughs> And you need the, the laws of nature to be what they are to drive evolution, and that requires a mind to keep them going in the direction like we spoke earlier. So you don't get rid of the need for God even if macroevolution is true. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good question.